Uh, hello. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Maurice Goulet, representing Goulet Associates. Uh, we're uh, a Vancouver-based company, uh, and um, the uh, what I want to say and present is mostly, almost entirely, uh, consistent with and in support of what we just heard from uh, Nick and Andrea. Um, the slight difference would be that that we um, want to. Uh, Broaden the perspective and 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 bring in, or at least uh, bring in some observations from outside Ontario. But given that we have many clients in Ontario, we have all of the same. We've seen all of the same issues. Uh, I'll just get on with the the, the first panel is um, this whole um, eligibility issue, um, and that uh, and uh, uh, I'm letting um, somebody at uh, the presenter uh, handle the the slides. Is that correct? My, my screen um, was showing our first panel, but now it's not showing that. Uh, I just want to be clear that that's going on. There we go. I, I, if everyone sees my first panel, uh, what we are saying is that uh, with the, the basis for these shred claims uh, going back uh, to the middle 2000s, uh, the medical corporation's employee uh, had time in research that paid time uh, constitutes an expenditure and becomes part of the shred claim. So uh, as we move forward into the current uh, debate, uh, it, it centers on the phrase of the uh, research by or on behalf of the corp. So this is not about who paid for it, but whose research is it. And um, so the, the, the recently, uh, well, when I say recently for the last, say, four years, they, uh, CRA has been advancing the view that the professor's research uh, is an obligation on behalf of the university, and they don't accept that the Prof Corp is financially sponsoring that time of, of, of the research being performed. Um, this uh, going back, um, I'm going to say three three years or so, uh, around uh, 2013, uh, four years. Uh, we have a 2013 a couple of claims that were. Uh, we filed appeals for at that time, and those are as yet uh, have not come forward. And I'll have a bit more to say about that later. On uh, the next panel, uh, the all-or-nothing approach has been mentioned, and uh, so the the all-or-nothing approach uh, is in fact the the one that, um, that we initially confronted or uh, saw uh, were confronted by, and uh, and and it's uh, first of all it's a rude shock when. Previous to that, everything was being allowed, and then and then comes the idea that uh, none of it is being allowed because it belongs to the university. So uh, when we have uh, interacted with and negotiated with CRA, uh, we have uh, established that the all-or-nothing approach is often unfair, and that um, th there can be a more nuanced approach. And so uh, this this uh, this is by no means resolved, but it's something that we're dealing with ongoing. Uh, next panel, please. Uh, so. So it, it, as, as um, I think anyone who's in this field knows, uh, this is a complex environment. Uh, and, and, and I mentioned um, the, or I, I leave you to read the panel as to all of these uh, variety of, of circumstances uh, that, that create complexity and, and don't allow for cookie cutter, all or nothing kinds of uh, treatments. Um, there's uh, the, the uh, one thing that's out on the panel is protected time, which which is open to interpretation. Uh, given that time is protected for research, is that, is that synonymous with uh, uh, required to be spent in research? Uh, of course it's not, but uh, the, these uh, things are interpreted uh, in different ways by different people. And, and all of the um, other items on this, on this panel are um, in play. Uh, one thing else that I want to point out that's not uh, necessarily clear to, to CRA people or anyone else is that the, uh, the university and the hospital are different entities, just as the, uh, indiv the individual physician and his corporation are, 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 uh, not, are not necessarily seen as a single entity, uh, neither is the hospital. And, and this is also uh, something that I think is important to clarify when you're uh, ne negotiating things with the reviewers. On to the panel about uh, reasonable and fair. Oh, uh, last comment about the complex environment. I, I think that I sense that CRA is, is treating these uh, all of these matters as essentially a scoring system. 
to see how tightly uh, can they allege that the university belongs to, or sorry, that the research belongs to the university rather than the MPC. And so the, the location of the research and various other factors uh, are, are given to be thrown back and forth. Um, the uh, reasonable and fair uh, consideration, um, we, we uh, go to documents. Um, because uh, verbal arguments really don't carry any weight. So we, we, uh, we thoroughly uh, bring forward all of the documents that, uh, that, um, uh, that spell out to whether it's clear or not clear, at least that we have a document that, that, uh, that uh, alludes to uh, delineation of expectations and, and uh, what, what would be allowed as uh, existing outside of the obligation to the university. Uh, I, I, I strenuously resist the idea that the university owns 100% of an individual's um, intellectual um, outputs. So um, the, um, the, base of the research that's outside of the uh, obligation to the university uh, ought to be claimed if one is being reasonable and fair. And some uh, reviewers have allowed and others not. And so we do have appeals in on that point. Um, the um, other, yeah, the idea that, that projects can be, say, jointly uh, performed with the university has been um, rejected by CRA. And, and I, I still hold hope that that view will be upheld at one point. Uh, also, a comment about um, the AFPs as a fallback that CRA, fall, that, that CRA um, resorts to uh, in, in, if the other um, eligibility argument fails or, in my view, the AFP argument is, is uh, not an alternative to, it's, a, it's always concurrent with the eligibility debate. And, uh, and I see that the, um, the AFP um, payments, uh, we view that as a grind issue, not as an eligibility issue. So it, it's the numerics from the AFP that potentially reduces the value of the claim, but it really doesn't have a lot to do with the, uh, uh, it doesn't have a lot to do with what claim, what projects can be claimed. So uh, overall, we have seen um, shifts in policy administration. Um, our own experience with physician claims uh, goes back at least as far as the 2005 fiscal period, and uh, we've uh, seen a long stream of um, routinely accepted claims. And then um, at some point, uh, we, we were surprised by the uh, Section 37 wording that, that uh, was, was put forward as, as a denial of, of all research activities that previously had been allowed routinely. So um, we have then uh, um, advanced and, and uh, developed the idea of separation of the two categories of research, that which belongs to the university and that which belongs to Prof Corp. Uh, and, and in most of this thing, I, I don't uh, mention the hospital because it's, it's almost, uh, I, I don't think I've seen a clear case where the hospital has any expectation of, rec of uh, research. It's, it's although the, uh, the hospital appointment and the university uh, professorship uh, are done concurrently, the hospital is a different entity and doesn't really uh, have any research expectations. Um, the, um, Next thing is to, on the, on the matter of appeals, uh, the things that we have appealed over the years have shifted or changed because initially uh, CRA's position was, was rather blunt and underdeveloped. And, um, and then as we've gone along, they've, they've uh, shifted and, and become more nuanced in, in the arguments they're advancing. But uh, we have got clear outcomes, a successful uh, overturning of the of the denial, and and uh, we have seen that the that the appeals officer agrees that the clinical repair AFP payments are uh, for clinical, and they're not for research activities. And uh, this has been uh, explicit in some cases, and others uh, where it's in, in entailed in the uh, denial and the overturning of denial, uh, it's been in there, and, and uh, so that was overturned without comment. So it's, it's pretty clear that the clinical repair is, um, uh, well, anyway, in, in the cases we've seen, we think it's clear, but that doesn't mean to say that we won't see contrary cases. Uh, the AFP academic funds uh, we uh, concede are, uh, are, are gray, and so we see academic as covering uh, teaching and non-shred research as well as shred research. So there we have to do some numerics on allocating 
on a allocating the amount, uh, the appropriate amount for the grind. Um, <clears throat> so the, uh, the, the, that the research can be claimed when it exceeds the documented obligation to the university. Um, we don't, uh, we, we have certainly established that in, in the, or it has been established that appeals officers have overturned claims based on this notion. Or so they've overturned claim denials based on this notion. And uh, just as a final comment that the, uh, the, the because of the complexity of, of the environment, uh, you don't just rely on a single document, uh, you have to look at all the documents and from that, uh, we have found that, that there, there is a sufficient uncertainty that the appeals officer rules in the taxpayer's favor. And um, <clears throat> so the clarity and consistency, uh, it's over time and also by region that, uh, and, and by individual office, uh, we have seen a, a huge variation in, in, in the uh, arguments presented and the degree of fairness that we've seen. Um, we have um, seen, you know, first of all, we've got an appeal from the 2013 uh, fiscal period that has not been uh, advanced to the to an appeals officer, and this this frustrates me because uh, I see some um, selectivity and bias uh, on behalf of the uh, managers who are uh, not allowing files to go forward that that they don't want really looked at yet and yet other ones have proceeded and we've had the uh, appeals outcomes that I've mentioned. Um, one thing else that we note is that uh, when we have um, the, the uh, denial has been overturned by the appeals office, uh, that, the, that the RTAs and FRs who were involved in that file uh, are not informed and so they go on behaving the same way on future claims and they, they get um, understandably frustrated when uh, a, a taxpayer comes back with a new shred claim after they have denied that taxpayer's claim in two previous years. So uh, we've had to explain to them and send them the letter from the denial so that they are brought up to date. Uh, we know about the working group in Ottawa and uh, there is no date for that outcome. Um, so uh, we, we uh, are necessarily waiting to see, but it makes the uh, environment very difficult for our clients and uh, it's, it's very discouraging. That's it for me. Thank you very much, uh, Maurice.